the spirit-filled life. I think one cannot talk enough about the spirit-filled life because that's all we have, the Word of God and the Word of God that the Holy Spirit inspired man to write. So it's only with the help of the Holy Spirit that we can understand it and really extract what we need for that life that Jesus meant it to be. The Spirit-filled life is actually the utter trust and the utter yieldedness to this Word of God. We fail to understand the full implication and even ministers and priests too. We, we try to read it but it's a superficial reading. When the Apostle Paul writes that that we are to yield completely to the Holy Spirit. We are to die on the cross with Christ. He meant it that all his personal desires and ambitions died with Christ on the cross. And that when he, when, with Christ's resurrection, we live in the new life in the Spirit. So this Spirit-filled life infiltrates and fills all of us. So the things we do, the things we say, is all for the kingdom of God. And therefore, they knew, Paul knew, the apostles knew what it really meant. And they went out being obedient because they witnessed what Jesus did. They went out preaching to, regardless of the dangers to their lives. They were so given up to the message that their own lives, they, they have no regard for it at all. Their worldly ambitions, desires, and regard for their own personal safety was gone. All they could think of was the message that, of the gospel. And for that reason, we can trust their teaching, even though many modern priests with ulterior motives and agenda tries to, to put holes in the message. We, they or they project their own shortcomings to the apostles. But there is a difference. We, regardless of what we say, we say we're yielded to the Holy Spirit, but are we really inside of us, in most of us, there are ulterior motives, there are personal ambitions. And for that reason, we do not trust even our own witness and so we project that to the apostles, thinking they are the same, but they're not. And for that reason, we can trust the New Testament authors. They have been preserved really by God in the service for, of mankind, of Christians. And in Romans 6, we read, Are we to persist in sin that grace may abound? Some people seem to think so, that... I, I know family members who think so, that they can do whatever they want and then they pray for forgiveness and grace would forgive them and they continue to not to be changed people. And Paul in Romans definitely condemns that. God forbid, he says, how shall we who have died to sin still live in it see if you can answer that question which Paul can answer and therefore we can trust his witness his writings how can we who have died who, if we say we have died with Christ on the cross died to our sins how can we still live in it which a lot of us do we who are baptized into Jesus Christ have been baptized into his death as Christ was raised from the dead, we too are raised in the newness of life. Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Verse 12 we read, do not let sin control 
the way you live, do not give in to its lustful desires. Romans 7, 4. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, you can produce good fruit, that is, good deeds for God. Romans 8, verse 9. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God living in you. The Holy Spirit is the perpetual presence of God in us. Without it, we would not know what to do, how to please God, and we will not desire spiritual things, prayer, reading of the Bible, going to church and doing good things. We, we will be like everybody else, unreformed. So it's the Holy Spirit is a, vit is a vital part of our lives. It's not just vital; it's the only thing that's important in our lives. That the Spirit, the same Spirit, the Bible says that raise up our Lord Jesus from the dead lives in you. Think for a moment what how that the impact of that that sentence. And what you should, how you should respond to it. So daily, ask that the Holy Spirit would continue His work in us. The Holy Spirit gives life to the Christian. The difference between a Christian and a believer of other religions is the presence of God's own Holy Spirit that will be present in the life of a, the Christian. There is a greater joy and peace regardless of the circumstances. I was remarking to my sister just yesterday that my life is one disaster after another. Things I had to go through, major things. But with each incident, my faith in God is stronger. He's seen me through all of them, all my failures. So, though I do pray that no harmful things happen in my life, but yet they do. But I always have peace and trust that I'll come through with each incident, with a greater resolve to continue my walk with Christ. And today, let us all spend a little time in contemplation of this message to ask for the continued presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, to control our lives, so that we may see the greater joy and the greater peace and the greater love. You will, I trust, I can guarantee it, you will be amazed at the outcome. I'm still amazed and I, I have no fears, regardless of my health reasons, problems in my family. My mother's ill and I have a niece who whose pregnancy is not going too well for her. I think her her fetus may have died inside of her. So life is full of these things. But always remember the faithfulness of our God. Let him come into your lives and let him give you a favorable outcome to overcome the sorrow, the sorrow of death and loss of loved ones.